have to change my coil. Uh, got my coffee going. It's Memorial Day. There's the coil. Cleaned out the back of the van a little bit. And then I got a walking box to look at. And an ice maker. So my holiday run is continuing. Let's see, I've done Christmas, New Year's, Easter, now Memorial Day. Let's rock and roll this. Okay, I'm out here at the condensing unit. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and pump it down. Got the analogs going just for pump down and stuff. the old coil so I started off by disconnecting the uh, electrical get the breaker turned off locked out and then uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, refrigeration lines cut off right there and then the condensate drain and then the four bolts that hold it up and then that's it it's very very simple on these tiny ones okay okay got the condensate drain disconnected got the Freon lines cut in the back now, um, <clears throat> you can take the two front bolts out and then just loosen the two rears and the coil will slide out. So I'm going to do that right now. I've got the ratchet going. So let me do that and then I'll show you that. There's the old beater. The weeper. You can see they get really plugged up if they don't do maintenance on them. Okay, and then there's the star of the show. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I like to uh, get the thermostat on the front for the customer. I'm going to reuse that ETC 11100 because there's nothing wrong with it. Get your unibit, half inch, make a hole in there. That's your front cover. All the wires hook up here. They already give you a solenoid wire through the coil. It comes over, it's power in, it's fans. Line goes up to your thermostat, comes out, gets one half of your solenoid hot, the other half goes to neutral. Very simple stuff. Okay, let's get this together. I got the condensate done. I got the uh, refrigeration pipe soldered in. Now I'm just gonna do the electrical and then we'll go outside and change the dryer and nitrogenize it and then get it on the vacuum pump. Okay, the oil's installed, up and running. Uh, we got power back to it. We've got to go change the liquid line dryer on the condensing unit. And I'm also going to change the low pressure switch on that also. And, uh, just let me go take care of the outside, and then we can nitrogenize it, and then leak check it, and then get it on the vacuum pump. Okay, little heads up. So on the Emerson sight glasses, make sure you get that wrapped in a wet rag. You get heat near it. I guess they've been tended to leak. Um, Super easy, sweat it out, sweat the new one in. Arrows going towards the expansion valve. Um, here we go. Okay, once again the flux, the little flux trick work. Nice clean endings there. So there's the old one, I got the new one right here. Let's get her in. Okay, got my dryer changed out. Got my low pressure switch changed out and I'm gonna nitrogenize and we'll soap bubble. Check for leaks. Out here and in the evaporator coil. Okay, got nitrogenized up to 200. And yeah, just check everything, you know. Check all your goodies. Especially those service tees, they kind of suck balls. Good. 
Okay, I'll go inside and check the evaporator coil next. Okay, I checked everything in here and it's good. So now I can get it on the vacuum pump. Then we'll get it down the tap and we'll, we'll get a super heat reading for our expansion valve right here. There's a tap off the coil. We'll see what it is when it gets approaching set point. Okay, got it hooked up on the vacuum pump. I got the I got a 3 8 hose that goes down to the quarter inch feeder with the shredder. I got my micron gauge on there, so we'll pull this down and then uh, we'll get it fired back up. Just getting started. Got our vacuum pulled. Let's go ahead and crank the king valve open. Sometimes you don't. So we'll let it pull down. I'll go make sure those guys got the door closed and all that fun stuff. And then we'll see where it settles down at. And then we'll check superheat at the expansion valve. I added a little bit of gas. Got the side glass cleared up. Here's our suction pressure outside at the compressor. About 28. It's about a 30 degree evaporator, which is about right because the box is hot. I think the box is at 48 degrees. So let me jump in there and we'll get gauged up inside at the evap coil. Okay, so I'm in the evaporator. There's no pressure drop on the suction line. So in part one, when I went, wah, 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 wah. yeah, that's all it was. Um, Super heat's at 14.5 at the coil, which is that's fine. Um, another thing with the bone coil, you're going to have to drop the drain pan, take the screws out to get your gauge on it the way they angle the, the fitting to gauge up. Uh, so that you know, those little dinky ones, they probably don't care about them too much. seems to be working just fine right now. So we'll let this pull down. The last thing I like to do after I got everything checked is I'll go ahead and turn the unit off. And my last two connections, I want to check those under system pressure. That was that cap right there on the key valve and then that cap on the T. Good, then we're good to rock and roll. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go check out a uh, walking box next. I think I got an ice maker call. Oh, and I just picked up another uh, another fridge call, like a makeup table. Be a busy little day today.